Good morning, everyone. Hope you, hope you have had a chance to hear about the service in Adam's keynote yesterday. In this session today, we will cover why we built AWS Private 5G in the first place, what is it and why should you care about it, how can you use it, and why we believe that AWS Private 5G is going to simplify deploying and operating private cellular networks. So starting with our motivation, last decade has seen an explosion, um, an exponential growth with billions of devices and assets coming online in almost every sphere of human endeavor. And with these connected assets and devices and the resulting data generated and collected from it, businesses increasingly need solutions to build applications on top of it, to translate that data into business value. And AWS today provides you deep and broad functionality to build these applications across our many services, starting from compute, hybrid cloud, IoT, ML analytics, and all these services spanning from edge to the cloud, you can build applications and solutions for virtually any use case across these wide variety of connected assets. But our customers told us that there is a missing link in this equation. And the missing link is a reliable wireless network, a network that gives you a predictable performance to power these connected assets. For, for your digital transformation initiatives, increased video content, lots of thousands of smart IoT devices, low latency and high, high throughput bandwidth required for your network, all of this is putting increasing demands on your corporate connectivity. And this is where private cellular networks are filling a gap for businesses. So what is a private cellular network? It's a localized LTE or 5G network that you deploy with a dedicated equipment for reserving network capacity at your on-premises location. And when we say on-premises, we're not just talking about data centers. Think about factory floors, warehouses, shipping ports, airports, retail stores, hospitals, stadiums, and thousands of other locations where businesses operate today. And all these very different environments have different connectivity needs. Connectivity needs for powering devices, machines, cameras, vehicles, and not just connectivity requirements, but ultimately being able to build applications, applications that could run in the cloud, could run on the edge or in a hybrid way. This is why private 5G networks have become a game changer for businesses who are looking to connect devices in these varying physical environments where wired or Wi-Fi networks aren't as applicable. So businesses are looking to connect or complement their existing networks with private LTE and 5G for these different use cases. And as we talked to customers, there were some common needs that emerged to the top. The first one being long-range connectivity for challenging indoor environments or outdoor spaces, where wired networks provide acceptable performance but are tough to deploy, expensive to deploy, and difficult to extend to all the end devices that you would connect in that network. Then enterprise Wi-Fi is of course simple and cost effective and has a wide adoption, but it doesn't give you all the features that you need for your connected devices today. Robust security features, interference management, device traffic controls, and so on. And then for long-range outdoor coverage, neither Wi-Fi or wired networks are going to give you extensive coverage. So cellular has been the best option in this case. For example, we have one internal customer that we worked with during the private beta of our service who had a use case for extending outdoor coverage and ensuring uninterrupted connectivity. And they have a use case where they're piloting a system where they want to remotely operate these autonomous vehicles for automating outdoor tasks such as parking trailers across a yard. 
The second thing we see is high density of device connections. We're seeing the need for this from our manufacturing and industrial customers building IoT applications. For example, one customer we spoke to, they have multiple industrial facilities, and in each of these facilities, they want to connect a multitude of devices, including IoT sensors, equipment, employee tablets, and wearables. And what they need is, they said they want a private 5G local area network, which can connect these different use cases on a single network, giving them the bandwidth and giving them the ability to optimize performance for each device. Then specifically leveraging the power of 5G, there is a need for building ultra low latency applications or high throughput local area network for specific business applications. For example, if you have high, high bandwidth video feeds coming from your security camera, or you need real time feedback for connecting machines used for surgical procedures, or you want instant replays at sports stadiums. And very importantly, the robust security features that you get with 5G for granular access and application-specific traffic controls. In all these very different use cases across a variety of customers, there's one common thing that we heard. Building, deploying, operating, and paying for private cellular networks is complicated. It's really hard. Can AWS solve this for us? Can you give us a managed service which gives us an end-to-end -end solution? Well, why is it that building a private 5G network is hard? Let's walk through the different pieces involved. Now, irrespective of whether customers take a do-it-yourself approach or secure the services of a vendor today, the first step with building a private 5G network often starts with doing upfront planning pre-dimensioning for your network peak capacity. This means customers have to figure out which use cases, which applications, which end devices they will be connecting, and not just today, but over time. So customers are spending considerable time and upfront capex investment in figuring out the network for their peak capacity, which is obviously hard to predict. And with this upfront planning, the problem is it's not really solving the need for enterprises because they are looking to leverage 5G, for instance, for experimentation, innovation, figuring out some use cases to start with and some to expand later. Let's assume that the planning is over. Once the planning is done, now you have to figure out which spectrum to use, which 5G equipment are you going to select whether it's going to be compatible with the spectrum. Then which network functions and software do you use? Which vendors can provide those? Are these certified to be compatible with the hardware that you selected? And at this point, customers work, well, even before that. Now you need to procure all the hardware and you need to provision it, deploy it on a hosting platform. Even with all the great building blocks that AWS provides you today, using our primitive services like EC2, VPC, and so on, you can build a private cellular network on top of AWS infrastructure, but there's a lot of work that you would have to do to integrate all these components together. And building a highly available, highly resilient, performant, highly secure service that your internal teams and operators can rely on is a lot of work. And at this point, customers' work is just beginning, right? You have to now integrate it with your IT management systems and security policies for secure device authentication. Last but not the least, the pricing models. Pricing models, customers have to integrate hardware and software components from multiple vendors, which means you are working through multiple disparate pricing and licensing models. And then if you have to expand your network because you have additional data capacity needs, it will trigger procurement cycles complete with renegotiations. This is an unhappy place for customers to be. It's unhappy because of long planning cycles. It's unhappy because customers do not have telecom expertise. Most customers do not have that expertise. And they do not consider it as differentiators for their business either. 
they have to integrate it with their IT systems, and it's very expensive. That is why we built AWS Private 5G. Using this managed service, you can order, deploy, and scale a private cellular network with just a few clicks in the AWS console or a few API calls, reducing the deployment time from months to days. We deliver provision and maintain all the pre-integrated hardware and software for the private 5G network operation. We ensure the network is auto-configured before your hardware arrives and you power it on at your location. And it, by default, it uses the shared spectrum. Let's dive deep into all the different capabilities AWS Private 5G supports. So we offer four distinct capabilities which are integrated. First, the managed service with pre-integrated hardware and software components on-demand network scaling so that you can add additional devices and expand your coverage as you need. Transparent consumption-based pricing with no per-device charges and single pane of management for your connected devices and for your network management. So we discussed the complexity of building a private cellular network. As we were designing the service, we said, we want to make it really effective. We want to turn network building into a truly API experience, which means we have to get rid of all the muck, all the complexity. This means AWS becomes responsible for all the different components involved. That is the spectrum access, the hardware, the software, its management. And what hardware and software do you need? Um, to give you an overview, at its most basic, a cellular network has two main components, two main subsystems. One is the radio access network, and the other is the network control and data plane, which is also called as mobile core in the industry. And for the radio access network, it's, it manages your access to the radio spectrum, and it manages a collection of base stations in the radio, or the radio units, as they're called. And radio units is ultimately responsible for receiving and transmitting the radio signals or the data from your end devices. And the mobile code is really the brain of your cellular network. It is where all the data is routed to to get the information to the end destination. It's responsible for critical network functions like user and um, device database, allocating IP addresses, managing policies, device tracking, and such. So with AWS Private 5G, we take care of all these components. We provide you the small cells, we radio units, we provide you the SIMs, they are AWS managed. We deploy the mobile core for you in the AWS region or on premises with AWS managed hardware if you need that. I'll talk about it in a little more detail in, in a later slide. And all customers have to do is they provide the, let's say you're starting out with the network, so you provide the AC power outlets, you provide um, public internet access and a pool of IP addresses for connecting the radio units you got to the AWS region where the AWS private 5G service is running. AWS region of your choice or the one closest to your location, and that is it. You can decide where you want to mount the radio units and depending upon the coverage you need and that is all you, uh, all you need to get your network up and running. To achieve this experience that I described, the first thing we provide you is a hassle-free API-driven experience for ordering your network. So you can specify your network needs, which is the coverage you need the network capacity you need, the number of devices you want to connect, and the APIs allow you to order your network based on these inputs. Now, based on your network plan order that we receive, which is we provide you the hardware, the SIMs and the radio units, um, which as part of the service, we automatically provision the infrastructure, we create and provision the cloud resources associated with the hardware that we are providing. We deploy a dedicated VPC per customer network to host the mobile core, which powers the network. So we take care of all this management for you. 
And in order for your radio units to work with the shared spectrum in, in the US, for instance, we're using Citizens Broadband Radio Service or the CBRS spectrum in the 3.5 gigahertz band. It requires you to be authorized by a spectrum allocation system for the FCC regulation for the radio unit to get the spectrum grant. So we do the integration, we've done the integration with the SAS for you to be able to get that. And as with any AWS managed service, AWS is responsible for managing the hardware and the software. And that's the case with private 5G as well. We, we manage the hardware, we monitor the hardware from the parent AWS region it's connected to. We'll monitor your network health and the metrics, and we'll automatically run firmware and software upgrades and the security patches as required. And to help you with monitoring your metric, uh, your network, we publish metrics to the CloudWatch. So you can query metrics about the network health, the connected devices, the radio units, the uplink or downlink data traffic that you're receiving in your network. I want to expand on our private 5G architecture design choices a bit. Today, customers have a need to build applications which could be spanning, you know, you could be running your application entirely in the cloud, it could be on the edge, or it could be running in a hybrid way. From the outset, Private 5G, we've designed it in a way to give customer flexibility to choose where they want to send or process the data generated from the devices or users connecting to their network. So the service that we have announced yesterday in, that will be available in preview, by default as you onboard it, the mobile core will be running in AWS region. What that means is customers can build applications that that you are okay sending, routing the data to the cloud. For example, smart factory IoT applications, or for extending coverage to outdoor environments because 5G gives you the benefit almost 10x the coverage per radio unit um, relative to what you would get with a Wi-Fi access point. And with this configuration, what we really optimized for is simplicity, speed of deployment no upfront commitments. You can get started with the network as quickly as possible because mobile core is hosted in the region. There are no servers involved, no installation hardware required on premises. We take care of it. So you get faster speed of deployment. But if you have an application that really need to leverage the power of 5G, you need tens of milliseconds of application latency, or you need a high throughput local area network. You have security or compliance needs for which you need your data to reside on premises in your local network behind your firewall. In this case, AWS Private 5G is again designed with the flexibility to give you this option. So as you create an order and network, it would come with AWS managed hardware on which the mobile core runs. And in this case, only some limited metadata will go back to the AWS region, like instance ID, metering records, uh, and monitoring metrics, while your data plane resides locally on premises. This is my favorite part about the service, one we had a lot of internal debate about to get right. The number one thing that we heard from customers was, how can AWS lower the barrier to get started with a private 5G network to help us connect devices and applications and validate business objectives, our business ROI, before we expand further, and before we commit to extensive network planning that I earlier discussed. That is to figure out how many small cells are you gonna need to get the coverage you need um, which use case you will start out with, which one will you expand to later. For example, when we were building the service, one of our customers said, why is it that I have to pay for all this um, mobile core capacity up front? Why can't they just scale the core as I light up more radios? 
AWS Private 5G takes care of giving customers the ability to order a network as small as they want. So as you will onboard the service, you can start a, an order a starter network which comes with as small as one radio unit and 10 SIMs, and the mobile core by default runs in the AWS region. And then if you have to expand the network, you can expand that existing network that you deployed by ordering additional small cells, additional SIMs, and we take care of auto-scaling the mobile core in the region depending upon the RAN plan or the, or, or the network plan that you're requesting uh, or you are expanding to. Pricing has been a big pain point for customers who have been wanting to deploy a private 5G network. Today, almost all the pricing models charge customers for each SIM or each device connecting to the network. And this traditional pricing model is not cost effective, almost cost prohibitive for enterprises who are looking to connect thousands of devices. And from the beginning, if you think about it, one of the key benefits of the cloud has been its pay-as-you-go, on-demand cloud consumption model, which gives you the cost effectiveness, the agility, access of access to all the latest technologies. So this challenge got us thinking, how can we bring that cloud consumption model to private cellular networks? With AWS Private 5G, we're very excited to bring that pay-as-you-go model to private networks for the very first time. So customers will pay for the network capacity and the coverage they request, not the number of devices they connect to the network. We really believe that this new pricing model is what's going to help enterprises unlock more experimentation, more innovation, do 5G application development. Because in removing, we're really removing that upfront CapEx barrier which is prohibiting or limiting this experimentation today. As we ran private beta for the service, we heard customer pain point about, how do I connect the SIM-powered camera or SIM-powered printer to my enterprise network? If you think about it, LTE 5G, with LTE 5G networks, SIMs are uniquely used to identify the device or manage the device. With AWS Private 5G, SIM is part of the service offering, so it's, it's an AWS resource which is part of the service. And with our built-in integration with identity and access management service, the SIM becomes an IAM resource. Which means, like any IAM resource, IT admins get full control to specify and control, manage control policies and define permission boundaries for who can access the resource and for seamless device and security management. So okay, now you've got the devices connecting to the network, you've set up your resource access policies. The end goals for customers is to connect their applications. So the use case that we heard with the, uh, from the customers was, how can I manage the bandwidth that I allocate for different devices in my network? How do I make sure that my devices and applications get the bandwidth they need? So if I have cameras and I have sensors connected to the same network, how do I make sure that they get the performance that they need? With AWS Private 5G, we have created a new resource called Traffic Groups. And we allow one-to-one -one mapping between the SIMs and the traffic groups. What that gives you is you can now specify different traffic priorities for your different classes of devices that you're connecting to the network. Coke Business Solutions is one of the customers that we worked with during the beta of this service. And as Matt here mentions, we are very excited to lower the barrier for enterprises who are looking to leverage 5G for their business connectivity. And along with that, 
with the ongoing collaboration and the partnerships that we are pursuing with our CSP and ISV partners, we, we think we can accelerate the business adoption of these disruptive connectivity solutions. So in order to get started with the service, it's these five steps that you go through. So you, as I discussed earlier, you order the network using an API-driven experience. After you receive the hardware, you can install it. For a starter network, you can self-install it. Um, all you need is the power supply and access to public internet for connecting your radio units to the, uh, to the AWS region. Once you receive the hardware, there is a step you will go through where you activate the radio unit and the network. So it's yet another API call that allows you to activate the network once you receive it. There's one more step that you'd go through when you use the service in the US, for instance, in order to, get, in order to give radio units the spectrum grant that it needs. It needs to be certified by the SAS. So you need to be CPI certified, certified professional installer, which is part of the regulation that FCC has to certify where the radio unit is getting placed. So you will provide us the latitude, longitude, elevation of where you plan to install, and it will, you will have to be certified for radio unit to get that spectrum grant, and that's part of the Activate API. And then once you have your network set up, you can manage your devices, you can request additional network capacity by ordering more small cells, ordering more SIMs, anytime. So I wanted to walk you through the demo of the console. All right, so this is the console that you would get once you get access to the preview. And this allows you to order a network. So if you think about the five steps that I walked through earlier, there are three distinct pieces of the experience. On day zero, you order your network. Once the, net, once the hardware arrives, you activate it. And then over time, you can monitor and manage the health of your network or expand it or scale it over time. So the first step is ordering your network. And this is the screen which walks you through that. So it's, let's say you are on the create network order page. You can specify the network name. This is the logical representation of the network that you're creating. So let's say I create a reInvent demo network. You can give it a description. And then site is the physical site where you would be deploying the network, so you would want it to be um, descriptive. So let's say I do finish in level three. All right, so I am in a status where it's saying, I have created my network and network site. Now I need to place a hardware order. I need to create the network order. So I go to the create order, and this is showing what the starter package could look like in preview, which is let's say you order one radio unit, 10 SIMs. It comes with um, some throughput capability. And here you provide the shipping address of where you want this hardware to be shipped. So let's say I give my Seattle address. Hmm. And 
and you acknowledge the billing information. So as you can see, the network is showing in a provisioning status because once we receive your network plan request, we will provision the resources for you and auto configure the network before shipping it to you. So this is, this is it, this is all it takes for you to be able to order your network. And I wanted to show you all what it takes to, once you receive your network or your hardware, you can acknowledge it. What that means is you're calling an activate API call which completes the provisioning step and allows us to activate your network. For security purposes, we make sure that you activate intentionally. So you can acknowledge the order once you receive it and that would set you up with a live network. Now in order to show you a live network and what that looks like in the console, I'm gonna switch because we didn't set up the hardware over here. But we have a live network which is powering one of our reInvent registration desks. And I am going to switch to that to show you what that looks like once you have a live network that's been activated in the console. So you can see that when I had an unacknowledged order, it was still in a provisioning status. But once it becomes available, um, it's ready for use. And these are the different tabs which show you the resource is the access point resource that you received with your network. And device identifiers are all the SIMs. In this case, all these SIMs are powering the tablets which are at the reInvent registration desk. And then we have a default group created for those devices because it's a single class of devices. All of them are being used to power the tablets, so it's not no need to create multiple traffic groups. So it's showing a single traffic group. And then I wanted to switch to CloudWatch to show you where you can visualize all the network health metrics. So if I were to go to all metrics, um, I was already in there. So these are all the network resources that we're creating, which is for the access point, for all the SIMs, um, your network, network sites, traffic groups, these are all resources. And you can see here, you can check the network uplink traffic, downlink traffic, the number of ideal UEs, connected UEs, mixing a little bit of internal metrics there um, but these are the metrics you would be you, you would be able to use to visualize your network health so that's an overview of the console and the api's for for the network functionality All right, so we talked about what AWS Private 5G is, what can you do with it, how can you use it? Well, the question is how do you get access to it? What I talked about is available in preview along with the console and the SDK and CLI, and all this functionality is available for you to order and deploy your network. What we are limiting is how much network capacity you get during preview to begin with. And this is to ensure that we can support as many customers to try it out. We are inviting customers to start with a starter network and connect their devices and applications. And you can expect that we will scale these service limits so that you can expand your network with additional small cells, additional SIMs, and even request on-premise core with AWS managed hardware. So you can sign up for access to preview at this URL. And with that, thank you. I'll be available in the hallway if you had more questions that I can answer. Thank you for attending. <laughs>